Hi everybody, I'm Julia and welcome to my garden. Today I'm going to give you a fall tour of the property. So my potage behind me, uh, some of the stuff going around, on around the house and the berry garden and orchard and we might even take a walk around our pond. It is October 27th so we are very much at the end of October here today and we haven't had a first frost yet which for us is really unusual. Our average loss frost right now is October either 10th or 12th I can't remember. It was just changed this year uh, before that it was October 4th so obviously our frost has been later which is actually really great for me. I get a little bit of a longer season. harvested almost all the potatoes so that's why it's looking a little rough in there I had my kids helping me um, there is still some in that second row from the right uh, kind of the the back half there still has some in it and those are gold potatoes but I think all of the the blue and red and uh, other things have been harvested and um, we've been eating a lot of them so <laughs> they're yummy As is normal for me here, everything is looking a bit tired and I'm tired and I'm definitely ready to get things cleaned up. Now I did want to mention that there's a couple schools of thought about cleaning up in the fall. So some people like to clean up a lot of stuff in the fall, it just looks neat for the winter and then in the spring, you know, it's easier to do what you need to do. Less maintenance, less work to do in the spring. However, I also know that leaving things up for the winter is really, really good for our beneficial insects and other wildlife. It's good to leave things up for the birds to eat, um, seed heads and such, uh, like echinacea, I believe the birds like to eat that, uh, some of them. And also uh, insects like to hide in like leaf cover and in some of the bases of plants um, for the winter uh, until it gets warm out again. And so that's why also it's not recommended to clean up everything until it reaches a certain um, a certain temperature in the spring. So my thought is this, I like to clean out my raised beds in my potager, the areas where I'm going to be planting early spring crops because it is really hard to come out and clean it all up. And I, every year, I, I never do as much as I want to over the fall. So every year I am cleaning some up in the spring, but it's, it's earlier than they recommend for the beneficial insects anyway. Um, but I wanna get my crops in at a, a decent time. So I do like to get like, so the raised beds in here, I will try to clean up, get some compost in, cover with mulch for the fall. Of course, my garlic gets planted in the fall as well. But other things, especially in like the orchard and berry garden area, I do leave a lot there uh, just for the insects, for the wildlife and all that. So my plan going forward is basically a lot of the ornamental stuff around the orchard and berry garden, around the house will get left. But things where I'm going to get early crops in, especially in the potager, will get more cleaned up. So that's kind of my thought process on it. I feel like it's a more balanced approach. <laughs> um, so that's what I will be doing. And uh, again, we'll be We'll be cleaning up uh, over the next month or so. Um, I've been able to plant bulbs in December, so our ground doesn't like fully really freeze until late December, January, usually. Depends on the year, but that's where I am on that. harvest many elderberries this year because we had so many left from last year um, but the birds really enjoyed them so they're all gone off the tree um, I suspect the tree will be coloring up soon and dropping its leaves but it is gorgeous if you've been following me for a while you will have seen we planted this tree as like a tiny stick in 2019 so it is glorious I love her so much <laughs> it's my elder 
I have not mowed in weeks. It has been so wet, I haven't wanted to. And there's like a, a volunteer ground cherry in here, it looks like. There's all sorts of things in here. So um, yeah, it. this, I have some different plans for this area next year. So it will it will probably change. We'll, we'll see, at some point I will probably try to come out here and mow hopefully before the snow. There hasn't been many changes around the house since we did that around the house tour um, a month or two ago now. I don't even know. Uh, I think it was in September, so not too long ago. And uh, so I'll, I'll give you a view of what it looks like right now at the end of October, but um, I won't go into too much detail. area still looks fantastic you can see the deck boxes up there are done they've been done blooming for a couple weeks now I think the frost will take take them out um, I'm going to leave it and clean them out after the frost and then hopefully be able to put some um, evergreen interest in there um, just some some boughs some branches and such for the holidays for winter but I, I love so many elements of this space I'm hoping to be able to put more plants in towards the left and back section there next year so the whole thing will be full um, but yeah, I am I am so so pleased almost everything in this bed is perennial uh, So they should fingers crossed come back the fountain is gonna be cleaned out in the next couple weeks and Stay inside for the winter so it doesn't get injured by uh, you know a heavy freeze. I don't want it to get cracked or anything so I have been working slowly on this side of the house. So a couple videos ago, I planted some peonies and some nepeta over in this area over here. And off video, I've actually been clearing some space over in this area. I planted some ferns um, that were just sitting in pots all year. Uh, so some of them, they weren't even like, there wasn't any green left. So hopefully they come back. I figure putting them in the ground was better than not doing anything. So worst that happens is those, those don't come back. Um, but yeah, I did transplant a few things and clear some space so that I can get some new things in here in the spring. I am so pleased with my walkway and especially the salvia growing on it. I will definitely do that again. I just, I love it. And I did go with my kids. We actually went to an apple orchard and we got pumpkins because it was a really bad pumpkin year for me here. And so I, but I really wanted to do a fun display. So I'll give you a little bit of a close up of that. will be carving some of the pumpkins this weekend so the orange ones you can see my kids picked out to carve so we'll carve them but I like to do it close to Halloween because if we put them out too early then they rot and that's no fun. We are in the zone where the kids are playing so they're just gonna be louder that's just how it is so there you go. Here by our breezeway entrance, I used our corn stalks from the corn we grew in the potager and some pumpkins. And most of these are ones that we did grow. There's some like little blue hubbard squash and acorn squash in there as well, I think. We had a really good acorn squash year, I have to say. Um, so we've got some like, I think it's table queen. I can't remember. There's some little dark acorn squash that we have a whole bunch of. So we'll be eating most of them, but I did, I did use a couple for decorations.
The berry garden is again a mess. I did do some weeding earlier in the year and then as usual it got away from me. So I'll show you what there is. Um, I've been kind of embarrassed to show you. There's a lot of grass weeds by the blueberries, although they look pretty right now. And uh, I did let Verbena boreansis just grow all over the gravel part of my row circle. I did clear a path. Um, we will pull those very soon. I'm gonna have the kids help me. They're really easy to pull out. Um, but I don't want them reseeding again in that area. I do want them reseeding the bed, so I didn't realize how well they'd reseed in the gravel. So I'll leave them in areas that are not near the gravel, like around the house to reseed. But yeah, out here, we're gonna, we're gonna cut the heads off and pull them before they drop all their seed. <laughs> garden I started this year what I'm calling a woodland garden I'm hoping to put a lot more trees and shrubs in there and um, make it kind of a fun pass through a, a very curated woodland kind of feel um, it's gonna take me a while to get there though so I did plant some birch trees and a, a little blue spruce and well it'll get bigger um, but not full full size and then um, I planted some junipers that I had in pots and I also have a mulberry over here so I thought I'd just give you a quick view of those um, the birch tree in the back, there's three, got nibbled pretty well by deer. So I'm not sure if it's gonna come back next year. I think I'm gonna order more birch. And if that one comes back, then I'll just plant it somewhere else. They're doing okay for the most part with some issues. The mulberry actually died. We had a late frost and it just, it didn't, it didn't come back from that. It was like a big stick but some shoots came out from the roots and I looked it up and I believe it is like its own root, like mulberry roots. So I'm leaving them, we'll see what happens next spring. I'm really hoping they are mulberry. So I'm leaving those and we'll see what happens. I also think this area behind me that's grass right now, I do like to leave some patches of grass uh, for wildlife for pollinators and whatnot, that, that's just kind of wild. But I do think it'd be a good place to add more trees. Um, so I'm debating doing some more spruce for evergreen interest. Also, I would love to put in one to three sugar maples, but they do get pretty big. So we'll see, we'll see about that. But um, over maybe across the driveway from the other tree might be a good location for that. We'll just have to see. These beds I intended to work on and have definitely been neglected this year. So there are honeyberries covered in weeds with dahlias in between, also lots of weeds. And I did plant the service berries at the end and they've been okay this year. They're a little stressed. I think they dropped their leaves a little earlier. Um, not getting quite the brilliant orange. These are autumn brilliance. Um, so yeah, I think it's just stress, but I'm hoping, you know, it's their first year in the ground and I do need to weed around them. So I'm hoping to weed this fall and give them compost. And then uh, hopefully, hopefully they're okay there so <laughs> that's that's there and and this will bump up the priority list next year to to work on these beds these are going to be kind of the entrance to the woodland garden and so i'm hoping to make them more of an irregular shape they will have the honey berries are kind of in a row and i might adjust that in the future but i'm hoping to put some other trees and shrubs along and then and then maybe some perennials as well so that's that's uh that's a next year problem at this point Orchard is fine. It does look a bit tired. The leaves are starting to turn. You can see a lot of the pear leaves have dropped already. Um, and the other ones are mostly just, the apples are mostly just starting to turn. Um, it wasn't a great fruit year in general. Um, it's very weedy. It's another area that I meant to kind of clean out the beds and reshape them and I, I didn't get to. So one day, you know, my youngest right now is two. So, you know, maybe another two years, I'll have a little bit more flexibility in working. Uh, out here with a little bit more time but as it is now uh, they keep me very much on my toes um, in case you don't know I have a two-year-old a four-year-old 
an eight-year-old and a ten-year-old whom I homeschool. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty busy, <laughs> but I do I do love my garden. So this is kind of my my me time. This is my kids' play area, and it's also where I added new trees in the orchard this year. So we added three apples and two apricots. I think they're two separate videos, and so I will I will link them here. Um, so there's been some issues with these trees. The apple trees all had some sort of fungus issue going on, a disease, um, which I think is just due to the so so much rain that we've gotten this year. We've gotten I, I don't I don't even know. Lots of parts of our state flooded. Luckily, we're on a ridge, so we didn't have any you know damage to our home or anything. And my plants are for the most part okay. I haven't really had to water much. Um, but because of all that rain, it does encourage some, some fungus problems, some disease problems. So um, I was definitely seeing that on my trees. Um, I did, and at, towards the end of the season, I sprayed them with neem. I really try to be hands off, um, but I did that. And then I did put their um, rings on, and I wish I had done that sooner because they all got nibbled. And I think that led also to the spreading of the disease. Um, either rabbit or voles got in and um, I, I think they'll be okay. I think they'll pull through. I did end up putting the guards on. Uh, they were good for most of the year. I think what happened is the area around us got hayed and it probably pushed um, those animals in and, and took away some of their food sources. So they, they went to my trees. Um, so I've tried to be better about putting some repellent around it and I did put the tree rings around it. So hopefully that, that, that'll help. One of my apricots, um, the one that's more yellow, may have been girdled so i'm not sure if it's going to survive so i will be probably ordering another one to replace that with or stick somewhere else if that one does survive if that makes sense so yeah i'm just keeping an eye on it it's hard to tell at this point because it's fall and so they would turn color the leaves would turn color and drop anyway it's a deciduous tree but it is coloring and turning earlier than the other apricots so there we go i'm not sure Here I have my forest pansy red bud, which I planted this past year. Um, it's doing okay. I don't know. Again, it's a little bit stressed and it's definitely leaning, so I may need to stake it. I don't know. I, I'm bad at doing that. <laughs> um, the new leaves look really nice. It has grown quite a bit and leafed out and everything, so I'm happy with it. Hopefully it's rooted in okay. Um, and this is our fire pit area. It's next to our little seating area under our solar canopy. I have, I've been adjusting that because I think I'm actually gonna move it a little bit farther away from the forest pansy redbud. I just wanna make sure there's plenty of room so that once it grows full size, there's, you know, not doing a fire under it. That makes sense. I am hoping maybe next year, maybe the year after, we can uh, establish this area a little bit more, do a stone kind of patio type thing around the fire pit. Uh, so that we can leave chairs out there and stuff and just make it easier. I love doing fires, but we have to haul out all the chairs and all the wood and uh, keep an eye on the two-year-old. <laughs> it's a little bit harder, so I'm hoping next year, year after, we can we can do something so I can I can do more fires at home. And I will eventually probably add more plants to the area, so stay tuned for that. I don't think I've mentioned this in a while because it's gotten pushed way down the list, but at some point I want to make this trench more of a stream bed and then when we have really wet seasons or in the spring it would have water running through it down to the pond but otherwise would probably just be a dry creek bed and then I could put a couple of bridges over it so this year you could tell it's gotten a lot of use and you can kind of see where it comes here and into the pond so it'd be nice to maybe plant some plants in here that really like it wet yeah there might be some good stream buffers um, to just kind of filter the water, especially if I make it go a little bit heavier through a stream bed. This is a little bit embarrassing, but I want to give you a full tour and show you what's uh, going on. And I'm also making a mental list of all the things to do. This is my compost area. Last winter, actually, some sort of animal came and pulled part of the front off of one of these bins. 
um, and I think another one broke as well this year. So I need to fix those. <laughs> um, it's um, been on my to-do list all year and I haven't gotten to it. But at the minimum this fall, I want to clean it out and hopefully get some of this compost into beds and, and on the ground. So that's, that's on my list for this fall, but uh, maybe next year they'll be looking nicer. <laughs> We do have a path that is mowed back here around our little pond so I'll just walk around and give you some views from that. It is a beautiful time of year here in Vermont. We are actually just past our peak foliage. I didn't quite get out for that. It's been raining a, a ton. Like we just have had so so much rain so it's been harder to work and to film outside uh, this season between uh, rain and wildfire smoke so um, and I think I might just have to figure out how to adjust to that in future years so we'll see. As we're looking at this water here, just to give you some perspective, in most years during the late summer and fall, we're able to walk down into here a bit. Um, and a lot of these trunks, the, the bases of the trees are usually not in the water. So <laughs> just to show you exactly how much water we've gotten this year. enjoyed this fall tour of my gardens and that you are all healthy and well and until next time happy gardening